great to be here. Uh, this year, uh, Cornell Tech really deepened its partnership with PSIS 217. We've established a steering committee that meets regularly to review programs and develop a roadmap for our work together. This regular contact has given us the chance to build trust and uh, great working relationships. And I think it's also given us, uh, at least me for sure, an appreciation for the challenges that we face. Last summer, we piloted a summer camp designed to teach computer science in the context of science, uh, ornithology in this case, developed with the American Museum of Natural History. The two-week course taught students to collect data on birds in Central Park and here on Roosevelt Island and analyze it and report it using code they wrote themselves in the web language Python. We ran this program through the weekend and we're working with the Roosevelt Island Youth Project to offer more computer science fun this summer and next year in after school. Okay, that's you, Summer. Let's see. <laughs> For the last two years, over half of our graduate students have volunteered at PSIS 217. We held our first PSIS 217 event of the school year, don't worry about it, in October, bringing 70 graduate students and the Museum of the Moving Image to work one-on-one -on -one with the middle school students to bring Halloween-themed games using Scratch. Here they are. <laughs> Walking down Main Street. Uh, using Scratch, the block coding language from MIT. Oops, sorry. It turns out that uh, Halloween coding events are very photogenic. I don't know if you can see that many of, our, of your students are there in costume. It was really, really fun. Cornell Tech uh, brought in a consultant, Kelly Brandon, to lead six sessions of professional development with all teachers, pre-K through eight, giving them an introduction to computer science and some hands-on experience with coding. Kelly continued uh, with a residency this spring, working with fourth and fifth grade teachers, integrating computer science into math and science classes. She met with teachers individually to help develop lessons that were aligned to material already being covered in class. So we're trying to integrate computer science into the subject matter uh, to help teach classes uh, and concepts we already want students to learn. Science classes, I think, worked on flowcharts uh, for disaster response, do I have that right? Uh, and math classes designed online games that involve plotting on a grid. And you can see here the photograph in the middle is the paper and pencil prototype, and then the game is actually on the computer on the side. We held a parent coding night in December during Computer Science Education Week. I had a chance to give a short presentation on K-12 computer science, and we brought uh, parents into the computer labs to build games with their children using Scratch. The entire fourth grade came to Google uh, to uh, take a tour of Google of their, uh, of their facility. The only classes in New York City to take a tour of Google this year because they suspended their school tours. They also worked in Google's pilot middle school CS Edge lab, designing and building marshmallow towers and wiring electrical circuits. They took a tour of the Cornell Tech Chelsea campus and had lunch with us, meeting our dean, Dan Hattenlocker, our chief administrative officer, Julia Weissman, and hearing about education and careers from several of our students. I did have a great time with the brands. Uh, we taught a lesson in algorithms. Uh, algorithms are step-by-step, -step, like very detailed step-by-step -step processes. One of their uses to tell computers, uh, computer programs how to run. So uh, the brands were working on a game design badge. Uh, so we wrote algorithms for hide and seek. Um, then we played hide and seek 
with the algorithms we'd written, and then we had to debug those algorithms. Because for instance, when they wrote the algorithm for me, they forgot to tell me to say, ready or not, here I come. <laughs> so when I started to look for them, they were like, hey, wait. I was like, you did not put that in the algorithm. <laughs> so that was a great uh, debugging experience. Um, then uh, afterwards, we actually wrote out the algorithm. They had a chance to learn a lot about just seeing it in front of them, about recursion and looping the ways that we write about repetition in computer programs. And finally, we had some computers set up, and they played a hide-and-seek game uh, in the hour of code. This is what Jane told you about. Um, in April, 15 Cornell Tech students and I led a lesson on algorithms with the entire third grade in the cafeteria at PSIS 217. Uh, we, we wrote instructions, we wrote an algorithm for making a turkey sandwich. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, they learned, I said to them, you know, you can't just say, take the bread. No, because the computer does not know what take the bread means. So, you know, open the bag, take a piece of bread out of the bag. <laughs> they understood and they wrote these very, very detailed algorithms. And then we took them, collected them, and redistributed them to each other. And they had to follow those algorithms to make those turkey sandwiches that we later donated. I want to assure you that all children wore gloves. <laughs> that we covered the tables. Uh, and so it was a very hygienic. And the kids were super enthusiastic. And they did not eat any of the food until after all the sandwiches were made. And then they mowed through those leftovers like nothing I have ever seen. <laughs> there they are. So in May, we learned that PSIS 217 was selected as one of 15 schools in the brand new DOE Elementary Computer Science Pilot. Called SEP Junior after the middle and high school software engineering program, SEP. It's the DOE's first elementary computer science curriculum. The idea is that with a reasonable amount of professional development, two to three days uh, in the summer, and then uh, four days during the school year, and support from the DOE during the year, teachers will introduce students to computational thinking, and the sequential instructions, <coughs> the use of data, and how to build simple programs with code. I can't overstate what a big achievement this is on the part of PSIS 217. There were 115 applicants to this. Our, student, our school was chosen as one of 15 purely on the merits of the really fantastic application they wrote. It demonstrates a strong commitment on the part of the school to broadening participation in computer science education and getting every child ready for the digital age. I am delighted to share the news that Cornell Tech has received a gift from the Siegel Family Endowment to fund a new position on our campus, Teacher in Residence. The Teacher in Residence, or TIR, will work in multiple schools to help integrate com computer, uh, computer science into all subject matters by providing professional development to teachers, demonstrating model lessons, developing and introducing curriculum, and providing feedback to the city's K-12 CS community on lessons learned. The TIR will be at PSIS 217 one day a week throughout the school year, and in our other partner schools, one to two days a month. We are very grateful to the Siegel Family Endowment and to PSIS 217 and our other partner schools for the chance to learn how to build the next generation of digital pioneers together. <laughs> this is just a rundown of, uh, of where the partnership between Cornell Tech and PSIS 217 had an impact this year. There's one missing on this list, uh, but before I show it to you, I want to say you can see that we had a really great year. And I want to thank Mrs. Beckman and Mrs. Allen and Ms. Bokeen 
and the incredible PSIS 217 PTA for all their efforts. They are great partners in this work, great partners. And I do want to say, Mrs. Bettman and Ms. Allen are here tonight. Would you stand so people can thank you? Yeah. 